Our little script is looking a lot better already. However, if we run the script again and try out some invalid input, and then we get an input that works, and the file handle is successfully created, and the contents return to the screen, the user is then exited from the script. There's no choice to try the script again with another file. We can achieve this by setting up another loop right around the whole of what we've got here at the moment. If we use another do while loop, and the reason the do while loop is so effective for this kind of thing is that it allows us to process the loop for the first time without testing any conditions. So if we put another do up here, and then at the end we're going to add another while statement. What we need to do before the while statement though is to see if the user actually wants another go at reading the contents of the file. We'll do this very simply by prompting the user to see if they want to have another go and then we're using the diamond operator to pull in some input from the standard input file handle. Our while condition right at the end is going to be testing the another variable and we're going to check it to make sure that the user hasn't said no and if they haven't said no then we're going to run that whole outer loop again essentially the entire program. We're using a little regular expression here to check we're using the not matches operator and then we're checking against n either a capital or a lower case so if the user enters an n for no then the program will exit. We can include a little ending message there as well. Let's move back to our command line and now that we've fixed that let's see what else we've caused to go slightly out of kilter in our script because there definitely is something that's going to go wrong here. It's working so fine so far we're still getting our invalid message if we put in some invalid input However, if we use our correct file and we're prompted to see if we want to run another file and we say yes, or anything but a lower or capital N, we get the invalid file name coming up, even though we haven't yet asked to process any particular file. Now, why could that be happening? Let's look at the top of our script where we have the error message and the condition under which we'll show it. What we've used as the condition here is defined. Now the file name variable, the first time the script executes, is not defined. However, once we've been through a single turn of the outer loop, the loop in which we check to see whether the user wants to have another go or not. The second time round, that file name variable is still defined. So clearly this is not a good test to see whether the user has entered any data in. What we can do instead is to set up a default value for the file name at the beginning of every one of the outer loops and I've just used a blank string there. It looks a little bit like a space between two quote marks but that's just because of the font that I'm using. It's just an empty string. So our condition here can be to make sure the string is not empty. In other words that the user has not put anything into the string by typing anything into standard input. So I'm using the not equals operator, the string not equals operator, and an empty string there. So now when we go back to our command line and let's exit our script 
and run the script again. We'll do exactly what we did before. We'll test the error message there. And we'll type our recipe.txt text file as the input that we're going to give to the script. Then we're asked to see if we want another file. So let's say yes. And this time it prompts us to say which file and it's not giving that spurious error message that we typed an invalid. It's only through testing our scripts and pretty much trying to break them that we can see the likelihood that a user will find our script doing things that we didn't expect it or intend it to do.